Hi, everyone. The 55th episode of Skibidi Toilets is out now. Let's analyze it in detail. Find all the secrets and hidden moments. Let's break down the Easter eggs that Dafuk left for us. Was the Titan cameraman able to destroy the UFO? Why didn't Plungerman fight the radioactive toilet? And why didn't POV cameraman ever use the laser cannon? Watch the video to the end. It'll be interesting. Let's go. The episode begins with the plunger cameraman standing victoriously on a heap of gray toilets. Dafuk once again shows how cool this character is. It's interesting that there are flushing levers lying around, even though we know that Plungeman destroys Skibidi with a plunger. He doesn't need to flush them. Maybe it's just that there were a lot of Skibidi toilets, so some he flushed and some he destroyed with plungers. Among the toilets was a Skibidi helicopter, because we see the rotor lying in a heap. Also notice that the Plungerman's lower camera is no longer glowing. It's still as black as it was in episode 52. I guess the glow is needed at night for better visibility. Too bad we didn't get to see what the camera was for. Then we see the same squad with a tank, which was at the end of the 53rd episode. As I understood, the battle against the Skibidi toilets takes place on a large territory. So in different episodes, we see different locations. By the way, where the action takes place in the new 55 episode, we do not know because Dafuk did not show the name of the map in the description and did not leave a link. At the top, we can see the text, They Come. When we look at the same place further on, the writing is no longer there, so it's an Easter egg left by the author on purpose. I have a few guesses who this inscription is about. It could be about the speakerman. We've seen them less and less in recent episodes. Maybe they'll come back and we'll see the Alliance together again. For now, the cameramen are mostly fighting the Skibidi. I explained in detail about where the speakermen disappeared to in another video. Check it out after watching this video. The second assumption is that the TV men will return with the repaired Titan Cinema Man. It is also possible that it is about both speakermen and TV man because Titan in episode 44 joined the speakers and symbolically united the two races into one. It's also possible that it's about G-Toilet and the infected Speaker Man. They too were probably improved by Skibidi scientists, because we haven't seen them for a long time. And it's possible that Dafuk is referring to a new species of cameraman. We saw a similar inscription in episode 52, along with the appearance of the camera woman. Maybe we'll see her with her friends in the new episode. Anyway, someone is coming, which means we are looking forward to something interesting in the new episodes. The Skibidi helicopters that attack the cameramen once again have white eyes. We're seeing more and more of these Skibidi. It's also unclear what this is due to, as they were destroyed easily, just like regular toilets. But the Skibidi triple bathtub surprised me. We saw something like that in episode 41, but this one looks much stronger. Also, it's a gray bathtub. It has a jetpack and lots of grenade launchers. I don't understand what's on the back of this one. Maybe some kind of defense or something. Note this point. The Titan Cannon destroys one of the Skibidi heads from the inside. We see the head fall back into the bathroom. At this, the remaining two Skibidi are stunned and feeling very bad after the explosion. By the way, the bathtub probably exploded so hard because of the grenade launchers at the bottom of it. But notice how it smoothly keeps going underground. Is this a bug or maybe there's just sand around it? Also notice how the flames from the jetpack are coming from the side while the turbines are looking down. This is definitely a feature of the textures from this animation. Notice this thing behind Titan's back. It's his hammer, yes, but it's a little different. As we remember, the hammer has two sides, one to attack and the other is a jetpack turbine to boost hammer blows. So this one has spikes on both sides like a meat hammer. I don't know where the jetpack disappeared to, but I hope Dafuk just forgot to add it. If the hammer is weaker, the Titan is not so strong anymore because he also lost his cannon in this episode. But more on that later. On the building, you can see a poster with a bright green picture on it. I don't understand what it says, but it reminds me of acid or radioactive waste from Half-Life by Color. I think it is connected with the appearance of the radioactive toilet, but we'll talk about it a little later. Note the Skibidi UFO that destroys the engineer's helicopters. He still doesn't teleport in the same way. In episode 53, where he appeared for the first time, we have already talked about the fact that he does not teleport but flies very fast. By the way, one of the helicopters is shot and the rotor comes off. Titan immediately decides to help the engineers and flies out to fight Skibidi UFO. By the way, there are no sounds and most likely the UFO just flew away. I 
I think the only ability Titan has that can destroy the Skibidi UFO is the magnetic arm. If you magnetize it, it's unlikely to fly away. By the way, check out that blue glow behind Titan cameraman's head. I really hope it's not a parasite. Because we remember that parasites give off a similar electric glow when they infect someone. It's more of a similar color to the camera woman's glow. And it's very possible that she's controlling Titan cameraman. I think we can make a video about Titan. If you want it, write in the comments and I'll be sure to do it. And at this point, notice that there is no black trace left after the Titan. It appeared right in its place by itself. And this is where I got really upset. I had suspected the TV men of betrayal for a long time and recently decided that they were fine. They were still helping the cameramen. But then why does one of the Skibidi mutants have the ability to teleport? Moreover, he doesn't just teleport. He also creates a black cloud around himself like the TV men. I don't think that technology could be stolen that easily. Maybe some TV men have been taken hostage by the Skibidi toilets. Then I'm not surprised that Skibidi scientists could steal this technology and use it in one of his crazy inventions. So meet the radioactive acid Skibidi skull. I am shocked by this one. The cameraman's guns have no effect on this monster at all. What's more, the acid pouring out of its mouth melted the tank. The large cameraman's arm began to stretch as if it too had melted. All the machines are malfunctioning and falling apart from this powerful acid or radiation. By the way, you can clearly see in the beginning that the plunger man is a robot. I say this because many of the cameramen had skin, but the further you go, the more often we see mechanical parts instead of a neck. Perhaps they were once human, but that's a topic for a different video. Remember that this squad in episode 53 had red lights on their guns. I assumed that the guns would be combat weapons because the guns that paralyze with a blue beam had blue lights. But it turned out that these guns also shoot a blue paralyzing beam. So the red lights indicate that the gun is off. Back to the radioactive toilet. When he turns, you can see a red tube instead of his neck. I'm pretty sure he's not alive. He's completely robotic. He has mechanical prosthetics attached to his bones that are supposed to move by remote control. There's probably electronics in his neck and a tube to pump waste out of a barrel. This barrel is just connected to a toilet, which is where the tube extends from. There are two more barrels underneath, possibly empty, possibly filled with a toxic substance. So if you destroy it and damage the barrels, everything around it will start to melt. His skull disappeared somewhere when Titan fired the cannon at him. I think it just broke off since this whole structure looks pretty flimsy. Notice that Titan cameraman's cannon malfunctioned. Maybe it's because he shot it too close. Maybe it's because of that writing we noticed in episode 51, and Titan did something wrong. A more likely possibility is that the cannon also started melting from exposure to the poisonous vapor on the tank. It didn't just catch fire, it also started glowing blue. The Titan took the cannon off his arm too easily, as if it wasn't attached at all. But unfortunately, the cameraman now had one less weapon. I hope his hammer is okay. You can also notice that Titan now has no flash, although he had one earlier. His main camera was also white before, but now it's black. This shows that he is improved with new, more durable materials. Now note that the POV cameraman never once shot at any enemy. All of his partners attacked Skibidi, and he just walked and watched. Also, he didn't run away with the others from the radioactive Skibidi toilet. Could be the POV cameraman scientist, or maybe a traitor. One of those who was not happy about Titan's appearance in episode 50. It's also possible that it's just to give us a better view of what's going on in this episode. Even so, last episode we saw a POV cameraman firing such a cannon. Either way, I'm enjoying what's going on in the new episodes of Skibidi Toilet more and more. If you want to watch my theories and new episode analysis, then subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new videos. Don't forget to watch the video about the speakermen disappearing if you haven't watched it yet. And that was me, Iso Toilet. See ya!